I'd like to welcome everyone, and I guess we did hit a winner by having these in the afternoon instead of the evening. <laughs> um, hopefully all of you received a copy of the map that we're going to be following. That's the Beers Atlas, and it was um, put together in 1869, and there were at that time 14 school districts. So first off, before we get started, I want to thank Jordan Jenkins and my husband Michael and Elaine and Rita and everyone else is going to be participating for um, helping me get this all together because it was endless. We have tons and tons and tons of information. There's tons of it over there. The files are full. There's pictures and things you can look at later. We're very fortunate that we have the original school records and um, it, it tells so much information in every single one of them. We have someone else coming. Wait, just a sec. And not to single anyone else, but I will. We'd like to welcome Tom French. <laughs> he will be coming up on number 11. <laughs> so number one, um, if Jeff Jordan, if you'll just go past, now we'll get up to the map, please. So that's the, the map that we're going to be going by. And um, because it's in color, you can, you can see that they're, um, you can see the different districts. But Jordan went on and put it into black and white so that you can see it better. Um, at first, we were going to try to just differentiate the schools, but instead I sat around for an hour with a magic marker and did this like this <laughs> because it's important to see who lived in those districts and those names that are around there are very important. So school district one is of course um, number one, and this is not by age, this is just the way the map goes, was the um, West Hill School. And in that book that we have that you'll see over on the table, the teacher's name was L.H. Ward and some of the students' names were Gordon, Doty, Law, Edgerton, and Rogers. And the children, Frankie Edmonds, was as young as four years old. They went from four years old to 18, some of them. Um, the other interesting thing that some of the, um, in the book, the parents came to visit and they made comments. And in this book, one of them, it's, it said, good school considering and clever school and cross teacher. <laughs> so number two that's coming up is the school that was located, this is Sullivan on Hopper Road, and um, that was shared with Timoth. The teacher's name was Ward, and the children from Timoth were Hopkins, and some of the Wallingford children were Ferry, Kelly, Buffum, White, Allen, and Marshall. And we're lucky to have um, Dick and Brenda Kendall in the audience, and they're going to tell us a little bit about what's in their yard because their house is right on the, near that site. You want me to come up there? Sure. Does everyone know where I'm talking? It's at the top of West Hill and 140 West. As you turn on to the West Hill, it's the first house on your flat. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, we're right on the corner of uh, West Hill and Hopper, and uh, oh, this handy's pictures, oh, okay. pass pictures around, yeah. Uh, it's right on the corner of uh, West Hill and, and Hopper Road. Um, and we bought the land off Truman Young uh, back in 1978, I believe it was, and he told me there was a, a school there at one time, so, you know, uh, that's fine. And uh, that the road used to go down through there, right by my house. So, um, in, in uh, doing some of the landscape and the excavating there, built, doing the lawn and so forth, I came across a lot of flat stones that were, uh, you could see, were used for probably a foundation, something like that. And I, I think it was my wife found a, a jackknife out there. And, um, so we didn't have a good well or anything, so we were trying to get water. So there was a wet spot just down, oh, maybe uh, 75 feet down half the road, right on the edge of my land. 
So uh, we took a swipe with the back hall and there was an old water trough there. And so I'm assuming that was probably the water supply for the, the school. Okay. And also I noticed looking at this map, uh, the, uh, that's the location of Hopper Road and uh, West Hill. Okay. There we, and if you, <coughs> when I was first looking at it, I was trying to say, okay, where's Route 140? It's not there. Now, if you notice, uh, there's a, a road going right almost east, down down through there, comes back down on Route 7. Okay, that's where the road used to go from Timoth down to Walling. Okay, and I know Ron's found it down in there before, and he's probably familiar with some of the, uh, and uh, uh, snowmobile, and that was part of our old trail too, but that was the, uh, the road that went from Plymouth down to Wallingford. That was called Drive on this side. Right, right, came out on the Cook Drive. Right. This one here also had a nice comment, and, a, and I'll read it just the way they wrote it. It says, um, I called in the schoolhouse this morning, found all things in order, see nothing why the schools do not flourish. So number three, number three was a real fun one to do too. Um, number three was originally located at the north end of town, almost at the bottom of where Haven Hill is right now. And I was just happened to be cruising one of the history books, the history of Wallingford, and they were talking about a situation that they had there. And they talked about, it says, Oh, I didn't tell you who the children were the teacher. The teacher was Marsh, because of the Marsh people lived up there. The students were Marsh, Clark, Stone, McIndeer, Penoir, Howe, Whitcomb, Wiley, Smith. And one of the comments was, uh, well done, good and faithful servant, pleasant school. And so when I was doing the research, or reading the history, I came across this little story about they're talking about a man named Scott, and his habitation was nearly opposite the schoolhouse that used to be in the Burley Marsh District. It was moved and made into a residence, now occupied by Mr. F. Minor on River Street. So I went back and did the uh, title work as far as I could, and that's the only house that I could come up with. It. Does that look like a schoolhouse to you? <laughs> so I, I spoke to the owners, and they, when they had trouble with uh, Hurricane Irene, they said that there was two foot wide boards in there, and um, that the foundation had been new, and they could tell it that must have been moved because it wasn't originally there. There's no original syllable. Um, so that's number three. Let's see, did they do all that? Oh, and again, that was called the Marsh Girlie. So some of these schools were just called by the names of the people that were around them. That was a piece of wood there. So number four, everybody knows that one. That's the Rotary building. And the teacher there was Elias W. Kent, who eventually lived in um, uh, Upton's house. And we have some of his diaries. He was the teacher. And some of the students were Coleman, Jackson, the only Italian name I could find, so I put it in. Kathleen C, <laughs> Dutcher, Shum, Generous, Root, Tooley, Moore, Jewel, and one of the comments was very good order, very well pleased. And now we're going to have Deb Scranton with her melodious voice lead the, the, uh, how, that, how that school developed. At a town meeting held at the House of Solomon Miller, May 5th, 1788, it was voted to divide the town into districts. And a committee consisting of William Crary, Solomon Miller Jr., Joseph Benson, Ezekiel Miguel, Salathiel Bumpus was appointed for the purpose. Quote, at first there were two districts, mainly for school purposes, and by 1794, the number of districts had increased to six, with a trustee for each district. Within the next 20 years, we find the number augmented to 10, with a total of 591 certified scholars for the year 1815 all over four 
and under 18 years of age, unquote. Over the door of the brick schoolhouse is to be seen the inscription erected 1818. We are told that the building was constructed by Lent Ives and James Rustin. There was a schoolhouse on the site much earlier, for in a deed of land by Lent Ives to Zephaniel Hall, there is a clause, quote, reserving the land which the schoolhouse now stands upon with sufficient room to pass around the said schoolhouse, unquote. The deed is dated April 4th, 1798. Probably this was a frame building replaced in 1818 by the present brick building. More and more thought was being given to education. A brick schoolhouse in the village indicates that it was looked upon as an important and permanent institution. The Wallingford Academy was chartered in 1814, but it never came into being. So Lent Ives, who helped to build the building, lived on our farm on Haven Hill Road. He lived everywhere. He lived everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> his, his house, he had moved his house with the building that you just read, the rotary. And then it was moved, from what I can gather, to the, um, I have to go back and look, but it was, it went from um, the rotary site to the Ivy, Munson, Ivy Munson site, then they moved it here where the town building is, and now it's out back. That's also back, yeah. When did that cease to be a school? I'm sorry. When did that, when did that cease to be a school? Well, that's the, that'll be a spoiler if I tell you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, wanted to, you wanted to know when it ceased to be a school. It ceased to be a school when the other school replaced that. But Reed is going to talk about it at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So now we're up to number five. And it's really good to have um, so many people were involved helping do this that when um, I showed it, uh, we were doing number five and, and uh, Elaine looked at the map and she said, there's two, there's two number five schools. And I said, no there isn't. There's only the one across from Ketchum's house on Route 7. And she said, no, there's one over on Harshware Road. And sure enough, in that interim, there must have been um, uh, on the map at 1370 Hartsboro Road near the Kimball Bloomberg's farm, there's a, there's a schoolhouse indicated. And then at uh, 2024 Route 7 South across from Otossons now, you can see the mound in the road where the cellar hole was. And we have some nice pictures of that right there. See how the hump in the road, that's right, that hasn't changed at all. Um, the teacher down there was Tom Zinn because he lived in the house where uh, the um, broad iron guy is now that it used to be Bruce's, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, the students were Cook, Edson, Naughton, Stafford, and Hall. And, this, and the comments were the students appear interested in their studies. So, number six we're coming up to is uh, 91 Palmerstone, um, which is now the Little Red Schoolhouse. And this again is interesting to do this because um, Jordan, who's new to town, but he's done so much work for us lately, he's looked at it and says, how come you have two number six, number six schools? Well, the original school is on the left, and I think someone, did it burn in 1950? And they replaced it with a little white school house, which then shut down and, um, no, 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 it was earlier than that because they shut it down in 1950, the little white school house. You, you, I don't know when it originally burned off. But if you look, you'll see that the, that schoolhouse, the South Wallingford, the, the, that's the South Wallingford schoolhouse, the East Wallingford schoolhouse, and the main part of the one in the village are identical. So that's number six. So now we're up to number seven. Number seven, we, um, it, that's the cellar hole now, and it's located on Route 140 East um, on the south side just before um, 2016, what used to be Dilly Golden's house, and now my granddaughter lives in it. And that's just a cellar hole. The teacher's name was Chestnut. The students were Warner, Shum, Eddie, Foster, Ainsworth, Brown, and the comment was a good school, well governed. Um, 
we went on a hike last Sunday, and because my husband does LIDAR, any of you are familiar with LIDAR, where you put the um, superimposed, he might explain this to you at the end if anyone still is interested. But there's a picture of it over there. Oh, we found the actual surface map of that way of the land. You can see the cellar vaults that go through. And there were three of them between where um, East Street comes down onto 140 East and where, where um, Sugar Hill goes up. And in that stretch, there's three, four cellar vaults. <coughs> so one of them is the school. And that's just a cellar vault. So that's number seven. Number eight is Aldersville. Now, Leland's going to speak about Aldersville because um, she talked to uh, Herb Frederick. I'm going to get up and give a few words about Herb. Yeah. We had the whole thing about Aldersville over on the table over there. That was a community that was around just for about 10 years, up in the woods, 25 to 10 years. Yeah. I, uh I have the privilege of, I don't know if you know Herb Frederick from South Wallingford, he's an icon down there. Um, stops at my house for coffee in the morning at, at a quarter after 5 a.m. <laughs> um, he sees my light on, so we have coffee and I pick his brain for the Historical Society trying to gather information. So I asked him about Audrichville and he told me, well he hunts when he was younger up there and did a lot of walking and uh, he started off by saying that the reason why they had the schools up there was because it was too far for the children to walk down to Wallingford uh, in the woods all the way down to the school so they put the schools up there. And I think there were about 28 children up there for the school and um, he said that most of the people that lived up there were French <clears throat> and there were some others also up there and they named the roads like French Road or I don't know some other nationality road but he said they all got together very nicely and worked well and the long trail went right through the sawmill and when Herb was up there he said the sawdust from that went over the bank and almost hit Homer Stone Brook, he said, and he could still see the sawdust back then from all the sawing that they did. But of course now I'm not sure, I don't think it's still there, but uh, he did remember seeing that. And uh, all the scrap iron was hauled away from the mountain and sold but the school now there's nothing there with a lot of the buildings you can't even tell it was up there but um, the little article that we have over there just tells you more about the village and one nice thing that we have is the register that the teachers kept and there's a series of questions the teacher has to fill out and submit to the superintendent. And here's an example of some of the questions. It said, how many visits by the superintendent? And this teacher wrote down one. And it said, um, what was the whole amount of your wages, including board? And this teacher made $181.75 a year. Is the school in good condition? No. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then they had a list of tardies and the absences and, um, and if they graduated from a normal school, I guess that's what they called it back then. And uh, so it's very interesting. There's copies there. You could take a look at it, all those registers from them. But yeah, way up in the mountain in the middle of nowhere, there were a couple schools up there for the children. So you can't see any cellar holes that are up there? No. Yeah, if you, know, if you know where to look. Well, yeah, yeah there might be some indentations. And the light are doesn't it? Yeah. A little bit. There's, there's, you can see on French Lane, there's four or five little depressions in the ground, more like crawl spaces than foundations. 
Uh, most of the houses up there were built on a side hill, so there's not much for foundations, but if you know where to look, you can see kind of the, the pillows of rocks and logs that they used to prop the houses up. You gotta look, you gotta know what you're looking for. So, so number nine was called the Spray School. And um, the teacher there was, I think it was either Sanford or Sandford, Congress. And the students were Warners, Willards, Congans, Hearts, Bourne, and Thompsons. And um, Chuck Ferguson, who was married to a hatch, who lived in the house behind there, where the Harp Pond is, up on Sugar Hill, just past the cemetery. He sent us that picture, they had that. And we're still trying to figure out, because we know that Sugar Hill was changed. It used to go behind the cemetery, and now it goes in front of the cemetery. So it's kind of, from that picture, we don't know what year that is. Um, but we know where that, that schoolhouse is. We'll get to that later. So number uh, 10, is um, again a cellar hole, and that was called the Sweetland School because the people named Sweetland lived up there. And again, um, Herb Fredericks had a connection to that, and so Elaine's going to tell you that story. Yeah, the only information I got on this one was Herb said, Oh, yeah, my father went to that school, and I said, He did? And he said, Oh, yeah. He said when he was little, his father and mother lived on the Jennings farm and in the tenement house. And when they passed away, Herb's, Herb's father was still very young. So one of his sisters who lived on 140 took him in. So Herb's dad, Lewis, went to that school for several years when he was young. And then he got shifted to another sister and Herb was not sure what other schools he went to because they kept him for a short period of time. And then he got shifted to another sister and another sister. And, uh, but uh, the only thing he now says about it is he remembered when it became vacant, they stored a bulldozer with a big plow on the front to get rid of the snow up in that area, and then they sold it to Ludlow. That's all I know. So when we first came to town, there was a um, shed on that corner. And I don't know if that's the same one, because they were holding sand in there on weekend, you know? Yeah, I, I can add to that. I remember in the, we moved to Hartsboro Road in the 50s. Okay, and that building was there with that big bulldozer had a V plow, had two wings on it, a wing on each side. That's what he said. And and I remember uh, this was the early '50s, and we got snowed in in Hartsburg, and they brought that bulldozer. Uh, I'm assuming it came down Sugar Hill Road uh, or up by Moran Rolls and down that way Sugar Hill Ice Bed Road. Yeah down to Hartsboro yeah. and did our road, mm -hmm. okay, opened our road. And I, I, I thought, I remember my father saying they went to Timber too. I remember going with my father out through, uh, towards the, the Rage Farm, which is, uh, what's Rage Farm now? It's Car Caribou's Farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. What else? <laughs> it was just, the snow banks were just a wall, about 12 feet high, mm -hmm. going up there. And uh, so I, I remember that. So they used that bulldozer. Yes, and, and I think he said they brought it up there to open that up too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, at that time. But I, I remember that bulldozer. And the building where they kept it in just before we were in the building. So also on Sunday we went for a hike with Chip Gottlieb. And he took us up to the Sweetland School. And it was a school number 11. And the only thing that we could find, luckily, was a sign that someone made, Tom made, how many years ago, that says school, house, and he put school with the S on backwards, house number 11. And that's up by his uh, camp that's up there. And you, like they say, you can't get there from here. You have to go up 155, and then you have to go over to Beaver to, uh, Meadow. And the teacher there was Alvin Frost, 
and the students were Frost, White, Rando, Shepard, and Henry. And if you think, you wouldn't believe how remote that was. Um, I don't, and there's tons and tons of cell phones still up there, but no houses. So that, and they call that the Hemingway School. So now we're up to Schoolhouse 12. We don't have much on that because um, if you see on the map how it juts way up, that's in Cuttingsville. And the children from Cuttingsville and Wallingford went to it. And we could not find any school records. I think the school records must be in Cuttingsville. And I think we didn't do any research, but the school must be right there in the village of Cuttingsville. It must still be there. I think there's one of those little buildings. And, and um, even though it was on our list in the, as a district, um, number 13 is the schoolhouse in East Wallingford, and that's a private home now. The teacher's name was Goodnell, and the students were Titus, Buckland, Ray, Hammond, Dickerman, Moores, McMillan, and they said it was, the comments were very much pleased and in good order. And you see how that school looked just like the, the one down in South Wallingford? So now number 14 is just a cellar hall, and that was located behind uh, 561 Centerville Road, and it was shared with Mount Holly because it was over on that side of the town. So um, the teacher there was M.S. Damon, and the students were Parkers from Mount Holly, Randos, Rondos, Hart, Wilder, and Earl. These same children were um, part of Aldrichville, so they must have come over there after because I recognize all those names. And the comment was it was a good school. And we're very, very fortunate that that school and what was it, 14 and nine. 14 and 9 are together, and that's where the lodges live. We have them in the audience. <laughs> but isn't that wonderful that they say goes to a school? But do you have any idea who did that? I don't know. It happened like in the 1940s. I think Tom might know more, but I think it happened around the 1940s. One one part was moved in 33. 33? Yeah. Maybe we'll that, yeah. yeah. It doesn't, and it doesn't it's, look much like the original, though. No, no, I was going to say it yeah. which, you Can you tell, like, is it side by side in the back part? Can you tell? No, no, the big windows are in the back. Yeah. There's four big windows in the back. Um, and there was, of course, that's an extension on the left-hand side. And I don't, I think they must have put on the entrance because that's where the, the, the outhouse or the bathrooms were. But, but your, entrance, your entrance looks a lot like West Hill School, too. Yeah. yeah. Like the cloak room or something in front of it? Right, no. yeah. I mean, that was, it must have been added after they moved it, but that's, there were two places for, I, I assume they weren't, there was no plumbing, I don't know. But. So because this was done in 1869, I'm sure you're all wondering, where was the Wallingford Elementary School and the original high school? Well, around that same time, 1870, was when they were building it. And Rita's going to get up and tell you more about it. But this right here is a replica of the original building. Rita's in charge of the alumni, right? Well, I'm the designated alumni in charge person. <laughs> So the Wallingford High School um, was right where the, on School Street, right across here where the bell is now. That's, that's the bell that um, they salvaged from the high school when it was torn down in 1975. So um, it was built in 1865 and was there until 1975. The, um, what happened was in 1968, there was an addition um, that was going to be going on to the Wallingford Elementary School. Um, so there was um, overcrowding. There were a lot, of, a lot of kids in Wallingford at that time, a lot of students. They were trying to consolidate some of those schools, the East the big East Wallingford School in the village, that was closed in about, at right about that time in 1968. And a lot of those students came to Wallingford. 
So, um, <clears throat> so the addition was going to be built, which was going to be a problem because the state um, says that you have to have so many square feet per child that goes to a school, so they have to have so many square feet outside of playground. So with the high school being there, they didn't have enough. So it was pretty well inevitable that they were gonna have to do something with the school. So um, they had all kinds of ideas as to what to do with Wallingford High School. Should they um, build a new school all by themselves? Should they go into a union? It, it went on for years and years. Um, and uh, finally in 1973, I think it was um, decided that they were going to unionize into Union 40 with Shrewsbury, Clarendon, Wallingford. And they were going to build a school on where Mill River Union High School is now on the Middle Road in Clarendon. So the last um, graduating class was 1975, and then in the fall of 1975, Mill River opened. But um, just for a, a few, uh, just for your information, um, when Wallingford Elementary School, the addition was being built, they didn't have room enough for the sixth grade class. So I, we were in the, I was in the sixth grade class. And we had our school in the town hall right downstairs here where Sandy Switzer is. That was our sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And then um, when we started high school, early 71, 72, the high school was getting crowded. Of course, those elementary <coughs> students were moving up, so the high school was crowded. So we had uh, bookkeeping and typing classes downstairs in the town hall. And we had chorus, uh, chorus class was held at the Masonic Temple. We walked down, took the back way down to the Masonic Temple, Kate remembers. <laughs> and uh, so we missed, our class missed by one year of having the new addition and having the new high school. <laughs> um, and let me see what else do I want to Did, say. Didn't the children, some of them go up to the building behind? Well, them. the shop class, shop class, uh, we had the teacher from the shop here, Ron Bushy. He was, he was the shop teacher at the time. Um, that was down where Green Mountain Drywall is now. That building um, housed that. So um, we were kind of spread all over the place. And we did a lot of things at the uh, Rotary Building, too. We had a lot of, um, like if there was special testing that we needed to go through or something, they would set it up at the Rotary Building. And it was just kind of a, a whole town thing. You were kind of, kind of trusted to go to those classes and, <laughs> and not just skip school or something. <laughs> the third and fourth grade went to Masonic Temple several years too. Yeah. yeah. Well, even even the, the girls got to go down to the shop class and it was very hard not to stop at the store on your way down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the decision was made to tear down the school um, because they had to have that land to satisfy the state so we couldn't save any of the school at all. It had to all be torn down and um, in fact, um, school closed a week before it was scheduled to close because there were so many people that were coming in and stealing mementos and, you know, something, they just wanted something from the school, uh, the, the flag, the flagpole, the, the balcony, the, I mean, these, these railings over here are, may mean nothing to any of you, but they were around the balcony in the gym, 
and many, many, many autographs are on mm -hmm. carved into that mm -hmm. those boards. Mm -hmm. So they are very historical to Wallingford High School. And what room was the Lincoln bust? The Lincoln bust was in the secretary's room. Oh, that's right. Um, I, She's I, gonna the I, I asked her where the secretary's room was in this building. Can you see? <laughs> The office was right here, and it was just a little <laughs> two by four office. And you, you walk in one way, and you can go out the other way. And um, it was uh, quite primitive compared to what they have now. <laughs> um, and another thing I didn't mention too was. Uh, when the addition of the gymnasium was put on in 1933, it was deemed the best gymnasium in the state. Um, but around, I'm not quite sure when this happened, but around the mid-60s, it was condemned. It was no longer, it was condemned by the state, it was no longer um, being used for our basketball games. We had to travel to Ludlow for quite a while. Quite a few years we went over there. And a few years, the last uh, the last four years, we were at the Rutland Armory. So we had to travel for, we never had a home game, you know, a home game. It was always travel. Um, Who in here attended this high school day? Mm -hmm. Did you attend the high school? Right? I was the first graduating class of Mill River. Yeah. Uh, so did you spend a couple of years? I spent three, uh, well, this was six through 12, so I spent five years here. You know that gym was donated by Bernie Batch. Yes. The gym. Which people don't realize it didn't cost a ton of cent. Yeah. We built that and donated the ball field. Yeah. And when I was in high school, we always called it Bachelor Field, which they no longer call. No, they don't. Which is it's too bad because he did he had no children, but he gave a lot at this time. The gym was down here and then there were two classrooms up here. Uh, and they divided one of those classrooms into into two classrooms. So when I went there, there were three classrooms upstairs. Um, and that was all built in 1933. And then, tell them, there's, a, there's an album over there, too, of the, when they demolished the building. Yeah, I have a, we, the Alumni Association has an album of the tearing down of Wallingford High School. Um, you can see it over there. It's on the table if you want to take a look at it. Um, and this is, this is, you know, what's left of our high school. What we have over there. So. And the flagpoles in back of Red Wade's house. Yep. On the land. <laughs> is that where it is? Oh. <laughs> what were you saying, Kate? You didn't, I couldn't hear you before. What? What were you saying before? Okay. I asked her how many years she she spent in the high school. And that was five, because it was six through 12, wasn't it? Or was it seven? Seven through 12. Seven through 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So four years out of. Out and then of, you went to Mill River. And then I was the first graduating class of Mill River. I was a little sad that I wasn't the last graduating class of Wallingford, but now being the first graduating class of Mill River. I've adjusted to it. <laughs> we have a, a lovely little picture of Eloise over there. I think she was in fourth grade. Where is she? Oh, she's in fourth grade. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's with uh, um, the two. What's your father's name? Ralph. From the two. Uh, Bob and Russell. Russell Howard are in the picture. Right. So oh. you'll, you'll have to come over here and see that picture. So oh, yeah. we want you all to come look at the pictures. And does anyone have any other questions? Anyone? Or comments? 
one thing that might be interesting that up in Sugar Hill, most of you know who all the student was. Yeah. My husband and I took him up there one time. He was looking over some land or something. And there were several schools in Sugar Hill. I evidently they weren't built that great. And he taught there for two years because they didn't have to have a teacher. They had to have somebody who would pass the eighth grade. Really? Because my mother taught school for two years yeah. right out of the eighth grade in Brandon. But all of us taught school up there. And so I asked him where the school was then. And the road has changed. Yeah. Year, you know, yeah. Because it used to be behind the cemetery. Yeah. But he said where he taught school was probably right at the intersection of where you turned to go to the lake. Now, well, after time, yeah. he said probably right about in the middle of this road. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's half of the Blodgett's house. No, no it's way this side. No, no, they, but when they moved oh. it, they put it. Well, because before that, it was up the hill further, closer to the lake. Yeah. Now, if you do the, I mean, if you look at it from a, where this, where schoolhouse, those two numbers. Nine and 14. Nine and 14 were. Mm -hmm. Your house is almost right in the middle of it. Right. Yeah. It's like they, they took the two, they put it yeah. right on the line yeah. between the two districts. Yeah, it's yeah. right On the, the map, middle. it shows it right smack on the district line yeah. between the two districts. Yeah. And I think the Stewarts donated that half acre. No, um, not Stewart, Parker. Parker? Yeah. You think it was, I thought it was before Parker. I think it's Parker. Anyway, but it's the wettest part of that farm. Yeah. You probably donate it because it's so wet. Well, if you know, <laughs> I can go back and figure out when Aldous Newton was, he was probably like, what, 18 years old when he was teaching there? We could find the book. We could, yeah, we could find the book over there and see what. I don't know. Yeah. He did that, and I thought that was silly and that well, right? Probably. Yeah, that's, that's what we read yeah. in the school. But he said the schools were flimsy. They didn't last very long. Yeah. Stove in the middle of it. <laughs> and kids and in, one of the, in, in some of the town reports, they tell all different stories of how they were, sh they were all sharing one tin cup and a bucket of water. <laughs> but they didn't get sick any of them. <laughs> that we know. Dick? I, I noticed, uh, I'm not sure if it was 9 or 14 name of one of the students, uh, Willard. Oh, yeah. And, and I was wondering if that's how Willard Mountain got its name. I think so. Oh, out there, that's from that family. And the hmm. same with, um, it was, hmm. that's up by you, Willard. The Willard uh, what's the other name? Wilder. Wilder. There's two of them there. Yep, Willard and Wilder. Wilder. Yep. But it is interesting to see because, um, especially like the Sherman Hill ones, because I'm more familiar with that cemetery up there. Those same names are in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. All those same names. They all stay going around for generations. Well, take a cruise around and look at the pictures and the things over there and what we have set up on the table. And these yeah. Also, Julie, there. some of these photos have been identified on the reverse side, but many of them do not. We don't know where the school is or any of the people. So if you have any idea let us know and we'll give you a piece of paper and write down what you think it might be because you're not identified. Does anyone want to know any more about how to do LIDAR and find cell phone in town? Besides, uh, besides, <laughs> besides Randy Brown, he already know. Randy got a, a quick lesson. If you want, just come over and talk to Michael and we'll tell you. But that's how we found a lot of the, um, the cell phones. I mean, so um, we'll have a little infomercial here. Do you want to do your infomercial? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We've got a couple of things coming up to keep us occupied during the older months that are coming up. Uh, the Historical Society on December the 8th, I'm going to do a presentation on being safe in the digital world. We're going to talk about how you can be safe online or with your smartphones or even just answer your own telephone uh, call at home when somebody says, I'm here to connect for the police department. And you have to ask, what police department are you talking about? 
So uh, that's up to center eight right here. And we're going to do that 1 to 230. And then I've been doing a bunch of crazy science fiction movies. And I also started doing some matinees. So we did My Man and Godfrey for our first Monday matinee. And I'm going to be doing two other sessions in November and December. And then the science fiction will continue in <coughs> November and December. So they're all free. They're here. We can talk about all the people. The first one we did was My Man Godfrey. And Carol Lombard was gorgeous. And uh, William Powell was very sophisticated. So it's, it's fun. And you can come and talk about it and remember the good days. We're not going to do anything. You're not going to see Ben Hur during this series. <laughs> We're just going to go for you know, very light out of things like uh, I was thinking of uh, you know, Mee, uh, what is it, Mee John Doe or something like that with Barbara Standick and uh, Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that will be coming up too. So please make uh, an effort to come out and see them. Uh, I know at nighttime it's a little bit late, but it's a lot of fun to see how bad science fiction can be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.